Hey y'all, welcome to Miss Clark's chemistry class. I'm here to help you make sense of everything that you've been learning in class. And what have we been learning in class? Mole conversions. In previous videos, I've taught you how to convert from moles to mass, mass to moles, and moles to particles or particles to moles. But what's going to happen if you have mass and you're going to particles? Or if you've got particles and you're going back to mass? That's what we're gonna talk about in this lesson. I know you're trying to make an A in chemistry. Don't let mole conversions be the thing that keep you from making an A. So go ahead and press the like and subscribe button. Leave me a comment and let me know how you're doing. Grab something to write with, grab a periodic table, grab a calculator, and let's get started. Okay, so let's concentrate on converting mass to particles. When you're converting mass to particles, notice that there is no mention of moles. Anytime there is no mention of moles, it's going to take two steps to get us where we need to go. Let's try an example. Okay, so this question says calculate the amount of formula units and 283.1 grams of chromium 2 fluoride. So first we need to get that chemical equation. And we are definitely going to need to get the chemical equation because the question asks about mass. We are going to have to find the molar mass. So first let's find the formula. Chromium is a plus two because Roman numeral two. Fluorine is a one. Remember, we want these charges to cancel out. That's how we're going to get our formula. Ionic compounds are always neutral. So we get CrF2. So let's set this problem up. So before we do the dimensional analysis, let's first calculate the molar mass. Because remember, one mole equals molar mass. Okay, so the molar mass of chromium 2 fluoride is just going to be 90 grams flat. We are going to need to use that in our problem. Okay, so let's use the train track method to do our dimensional analysis. And anytime we do dimensional analysis, we always want to put our given on the top first. And if we refer back to our question, our given is 283.1 grams of chromium 2 fluoride. So we've got to cancel grams out. We know that molar mass is equal to one mole. We have grams here. So we must put grams on the bottom. And remember, that's the molar mass, and the molar mass is always equal to one mole. But we're not done yet. We're being asked about formula units. Remember, formula units are particles. So we're going to have to use two conversion factors because both of our known quantities, the molar mass and Avogadro's number, they both relate to the mole. So we have to go through the mole to get where we're going. So our grams cancel, we're left with a mole, now we need to cancel our moles. So I'm gonna put moles on bottom so they cancel out. And remember, the other conversion factor we know is that one mole is equal to Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And in this case, the particle we're talking about is formula units. Okay, so now our problem is set up. We need to put this in the calculator. First, type in your given number, and then we're gonna push the divide sign because the number that comes next is on bottom. Now remember, I'm ignoring the ones because if you multiply by one or you divide by one, it gets the same thing, so it really doesn't matter. So we've got 283.1 divided by 90, because it's on bottom, multiply by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Again, if you don't know how to type that in the calculator, I do have a video for that. Look up for that link above. Okay, so we pressed enter. We wanna look back at our given to figure out how many sig figs. 283.1, that's four sig figs. So when we type this into the calculator, we are going to round and so our final answer is 1.894 times 10 to the 24 formula units of chromium 2 fluoride. Let's work another problem so we can really make this sink in. How many grams are in 6.99 times 10 to the 21 molecules of carbon tetrachloride? The first thing we need to realize is this problem does not say moles. If it doesn't say moles, we've got to use both of our conversion factors. One mole equals the molar mass, and one mole equals Avogadro's number. We're going to use both of these in this problem. The next thing we need to think about is what is the molar mass? Well, the molar mass of what? 
carbon tetrachloride. That's just CCl4. Okay, let's calculate the molar mass. Okay, so we see the molar mass of carbon tetrachloride is 118.36. Now, I am kind of speeding right through calculating the molar mass. If you don't know how to calculate the molar mass using the periodic table, please go watch that video. That's very important that you understand how to do that. So the molar mass of carbon tetrachloride is 118.36 grams. That means, so that means one mole of carbon tetrachloride equals 118.36. We're going to need to use that. Let's set up our dimensional analysis. We've got to put the given on top. We've got molecules on top. We've got to put molecules on bottom. And remember, if we put molecules somewhere, that's a particle. One mole equals Avogadro's number's amount of particles. In this case, since this is a molecular compound, we're using molecules. But we're not quite done. We've got to get it all the way to grams. How many grams? So we've got another step. So if we've got moles on top, we want to cancel that out by putting moles on bottom. And since we're needing grams now, because that's what the question is asking, that is where the molar mass is going to go. So we have our problem set up. Let's talk about how to put it in the calculator. Type the given in first, 6.99 times 10 to the 21st. Since the next number is on bottom, we're going to press divide. Divide 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And then since the next number is on top, we're going to multiply 118.36. When we put that in the calculator, we need to round to three sig figs. And so our final answer is 1.37 grams of carbon tetrachloride. I have one more example to help us really understand this. Calculate the number of atoms that are in 893.1 grams of magnesium. Now the last two examples I did were both of compounds. This is just of an element. Process is exactly the same, but a little bit shorter because you don't have to calculate the molar mass. You just look at the periodic table. And if we look at the periodic table for magnesium, we see that magnesium's molar mass is 24.31. One mole of magnesium is 24.31. We will need to use that in this problem because this problem does mention grams, does not mention moles. That tells us we've got to use both of our conversion factors. We can just go ahead and start our dimensional analysis. So we've got our given up top. Our given has grams in it. We've got to cancel that grams out. And what number do we use when we talk about grams? Molar mass. So we've got the molar mass is equal to a mole. Mole is on top, but we're not quite done because we have got to go all of the way to atoms. And we are only to moles. We've got one more step. So we've got to cancel out moles. And since we're looking for atoms, atoms is a particle, so we've got to use Avogadro's number. And we're using atoms for our particles because we're talking about just a single element. So we've canceled down our mole. Now we've got to put Avogadro's number on top because remember that's how many particles are equal to a mole. And we're using the unit atoms because magnesium is just a single element. And so the appropriate particle unit is atoms. Okay, so let's put this in the calculator. We're going to type in our given 893.1 divided by 24.31 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd equals. We've got to go back and look at our given to see about how many sig figs. 1, 2, 3, 4, and so our answer needs 4, 2.212 times 10 to the 23rd, and that is atoms of magnesium. I'm hoping you feel confident now that we've kind of put all this mole conversion together. Mass to mole, moles and particles, put those two thoughts together, and now we can go from mass to particles or particles to mass. I know it's one more step, but it's really not that big of a deal. I'm really hoping that you're starting to understand dimensional analysis and how it really does help you convert moles. If you're finding this helpful and you have not pressed the like and subscribe button, what are you waiting for? Also, while you're at it, go ahead and hit that bell and turn it from red to gray. Don't forget to share with your friends. Until next time, bye y'all.